What is up, everybody? I am back again with my fantasy football mock draft series. We are talking about the second pick, and I will show you what I would do if I had the second pick in fantasy football. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. So with CMC going number one and probably in all fantasy football drafts, we do have the second pick. It is between CD Lamb and Tyreek Hill. Me, I'm probably going to lean towards CD Lamb just for a few reasons. One, he just has a great connection with Dak Prescott. He led all wide receivers in targets, points per game, red zone targets, total touchdowns, routes one. Um, and the one thing that CD Lamb has going for him is his inside out versatility. He played more slot snaps than he did as an as a wide out. And I believe with him playing a lot of slot snaps, he's going against a lot of nickel corners. And just mismatch opportunities instead of facing the CB1 and CB2 a lot. And I think that's what gets him in open opportunities to not only move the ball, uh, score touchdowns, but he also led all wide receivers in yards after the catch. I just think that CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott connection is pretty serious. And him just playing a lot of slot snaps is going to create a lot of mismatch opportunities. So for that reason, I'm going to go with CeeDee Lamb with the second pick. Round two, pick 11. We did take care of the wide receiver in round one. I'm a big fan of going running back in round two. So if you're going running back first round, wide receiver second round, vice versa. So in this case, I will go running back here. And I really like the idea of getting Isaiah Pacheco late in the second round. Like I said before in my previous video, um, I just think that Isaiah Pacheco is going to break out. He's going to be, he's RB2, but he is going to provide some RB1 upside. Jerry McKinnon is not coming back. So I do see a lot of workload for Pacheco. He might be utilized in the passing game as a receiver out back in the backfield. But I just think that Isaiah Pacheco is going to have a career year this upcoming season. A lot of goal line work, a lot of red zone work, a lot of first second down work so i just like him just being the starter of this chiefs team that's going to consistently move the ball and put him in the position to score touchdowns so i'm going to take the career year that i expect isaiah pacheco is going to have in 2024 let's go ahead and select isaiah pacheco with the second round round three pick two we are back again in round three and i'm a big fan of going wide receiver this time. You took care of wide receiver one, took care of the RB1. So let's go ahead and pick a receiver. And with this pick, out of all four of these options, I'm going to go with Mike Evans. Mike Evans, since he became an NFL wide receiver, he's been automatic getting 1,000 receiving yards and pretty much guaranteeing you about eight plus touchdown receptions and I love the consistency that Mike Evans provides as a receiver he's a very safe pick and fantasy so getting someone that's going to consistently give you at least a thousand recept uh, receiving yards good amount of receptions and touchdowns you have to get that safe pick here so I'm gonna go ahead not get not overthink this pick we're gonna select Mike Evans so now we have uh CD Lamb Mike Evans as your top two receivers in your starting lineup. All right, round four, pick 11. Now you're at the back end of round four. This is where you kind of get a feel of who your league mates have been drafting around this time. Um, but once it's your turn, you kind of have to decide between is it a wide receiver this time or a running back. So you kind of have to get a feel of who's available. So at the wide receiver, we have DJ Moore, Amari Cooper, Devontae Smith, Malik Neighbors. And then as running back, we have Ramondre Stevenson, Aaron Jones, Najee Harris, Zamir White. Um, what I would do in the situation based on availability, I'm probably going to go wide receiver here and who I would decide to pick, especially in my flex spot, because I'm here picking three wide receivers. I'm going to go ahead and select Devontae Smith. I know this might go against the grain of who you guys might pick, but I really like the idea of this new offensive coordinator, Cullen Moore, coming in. I think this is going to be a very pass-heavy offense. I think we're going to see a lot of Jalen Hurts stay in the pocket as a passer, and I think this might be gearing towards um, A.J. Brown in terms of target share but obviously 
with Devontae Smith being wide receiver two in the Eagles offense, I do expect Devontae Smith to make big splash plays and provide pretty good flex block value, giving you about 12, prob- 12 plus points on a weekly basis. So I just like the value here of Devontae Smith and don't know what I could see out of Caleb Williams. Don't know how Deshaun Watson's going to be. And Daniel Jones has a quarterback don't kind of like the idea of game elite neighbors right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get Devontae Smith here. I just like the the safe floor that I have it with him as a flex. Pick five, pick two. We do have three wide receivers. I think it's time to get that second running back to pair with Isaiah Pacheco. And out of these four options, I'm going to select Ramondre Stevenson. Here is why. Offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt. He did come from the Cleveland Browns, and during his four-year tenure with the Browns, three out of the four seasons, they did finish top 10 in rushing yards, and I think he's going to carry that run-heavy type style to the Patriots team. Stevenson, he is the RB1. He is going to see a lot of workload as a runner, and I do like his ability to get targets out of the backfield. So I do like the fact that he can provide value as a runner and a receiver, I do like him as an RB2. I know sometimes the Patriots running backs do have some type of committee, but if Stevenson can stay healthy, I'd actually like him as an RB2. Um, but depending on who we get later on in the draft, we could probably switch him as a flex, and depending, we could switch him as an RB2. But right now, I just like Ramondre Stevenson as a runner and a receiver out of the back of your field for the Patriots, along with Alex Van Pelt on as an offensive coordinator. So we're going to go ahead and select Ramondre Stevenson. Round six, pick 11, we can definitely look at a few other positions such as tight end, quarterback. We can also look at, you know, double dipping back-to-back picks on the running backs, look at raw receivers. Honestly, right here, I'm going to go ahead and stack the quarterback with Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb has a quarterback that throws him the ball. His name is Dak Prescott, and I just feel like this duo of just Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb they're going to provide tremendous fantasy points. As long as Dak and CD are healthy, this is probably one of the top stacks you can have in fantasy football. And with Dak being available, why not stack Dak and Lamb and get extreme value and getting double, like multiplying your points? So let's go ahead and stack Dak as your quarterback to pair up with CD Lamb. Round seven, pick two. We just took care of the quarterback position in round six. Now it's your turn again in round Round seven, pick two. You can look at filling out your line up with a wide receiver. Look at tight ends or a running back. I really like getting Jalen Warren here in the seventh round. I think he provides good value as a runner and a receiver out in the backfield. I think with Arthur Smith coming in as an offensive coordinator, I think Warren's going to cut into Najee Harris's workload. And I think we may see a lot more of Jalen Warren. And I think Jalen Warren is going to provide week to week value. He may come in as a flex, or if one of your running backs do get hurt, whether it's Pacheco or Stevenson, I wouldn't be scared to kind of throw Warren in there and just kind of just shot, shoot a dart and see what he could provide in that week. But I, I'll start to fill up that running back depth just in case anything were to happen and i like the value and the type of talent that jillian warren provides out in the backfield with the steelers so let's go ahead and select jillian warren and get that third running back round eight pick 11 we just drafted a running back previously so now we have three quality running backs this round i'm going to select a wide receiver and ppr leagues is very crucial to kind of get a nice dose of receivers. I can get some type of target share and get some receptions. So out of these four options, I'm going to select Jaden Reed. Here's why. Um, He isn't going to face a potential suspension like Rashi Rice is. And the thing about Jaden Reed is statistically, he was actually a top 10 slot receiver. And I think it's very crucial, crucial when you're working the slot, you do have the potential to have mismatch opportunities. Jaden Reed did finish top 20 in fantasy points out of all wide receivers, and he also provides rushing value. He did average 10.8 yards per rush with two rushing touchdowns. So I do believe he kind of provides that mini Debo-like value. So I'm going to select Jaden Reed based off his versatility as a receiver, and he do and he can get some value as a runner. So let's go get Jaden Reed in round eight. Round nine, pick two. 
We have some quality running backs. We have four receivers that are pretty solid that can either play the top two wide receiver spots or provide flex value. I think we're okay in the wide receivers right now, and I think we're pretty much okay in the running back room. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the quarterbacks because I'm a big fan of getting two quarterbacks. Depending on matchups, I like to kind of bench one, start one, or if there's bye weeks, bench one, start one. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and select Jaden Daniels. He's going to be one of the top dual threat quarterbacks in the NFL. He is my dark horse rookie of the year. He's going to be a part of that air raid offense with Cliff Kingsbury. When Cliff Kingsbury had Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray did win rookie of the year. And I do think that Jane Daniels can provide that type of potential in that Kyler Murray like rookie year. Jaden Daniels, honestly, do not be surprised if he can put up at least 4,000 total yards through the air and on the ground. So I really like this spot for Jaden Daniels. I do think that the commanders will be down in a quite amount of games where he'll probably have some garbage time passes and running and provide uh, touchdowns on the ground and through the air. So let's go ahead, go ahead and get yourself a dual threat quarterback as a stash. And let's go get Jaden Daniels. Round 10, pick 11. Let's start to kind of get your stash and fill up your bench. Get some quality players, whether they're sleeper players or players that may not see some time until later in the season. But we can definitely see what our options are looking like. We can look at the running backs. I'm really feeling the available wide receivers here. You have JSN, Brian Thomas Jr., Keon Coleman, Rashid Shahid. I am going to select brian thomas jr he is going to be the top dog in the jaguars receiver room yes they do have christian kirk but brian thomas jr is probably one of the top deep threat wide receivers as a rookie in the nfl trevor lawrence he's going to air the bar ball out a lot this upcoming season they have kirk thomas jr gabe davis you have evan ingram this is going to be a very Heavy aerial attack offense. And I think that Brian Thomas Jr. can finish top 10 and 20 plus yard receptions and 40 plus yard receptions in the NFL as a rookie. Might be quite of a hot take, but I think he may finish the season with more receiving yards than Malik Neighbors. That is might be a hot one, but this is going to be a very aerial attack offense with Brian Thomas Jr. touching the field and his deep threat ability. I'm going to go ahead and take that upside here and select Brian Thomas Jr. as a stash receiver who could be a nice plug and play flex on how the season is going. Round 11, pick two. I'm not going to lie. Our wide receivers are looking pretty legit. I think everyone could be interchangeable as wide receiver one, wide receiver two, and provide flex value. So I like where we're at at the wide receiver position. We're going to hold off right now on it. So we'll skip that position right now. We can look at the running backs. I think we're pretty much good with two quarterbacks. We do not have a tight end. So I think we should go ahead and take care of that position right now. So we do have Jake Fer Ferguson. Unfortunately, I would not select him. We do have Dak Prescott and CD Lamb. And that might hit hurt us on bye week, especially on bye seven. Don't think we should have three Cowboys. So we're going to skip on that. We do have David Njoku. He I felt like he didn't really come to life until Joe Flacco came in. And I'm a bit weary on how Deshaun Watson is going to perform in 2024. Um, I just don't know what I'm getting at this point, especially where Watson is at his career and especially of how he's played recently. I don't know how I feel about Njoku right now. Evan Ingram, we do have Brian Thomas, even though I do think Evan Ingram will be a solid tight end play. But I just feel like there's a lot of mouths to feed in the Jaguars receiving core. We do have Brian Thomas. I'm okay with, you know, with him as the only Jaguar on the team. I'm going to go ahead and take a deep flyer and select Brock Bowers. I think that he's going to be a surprise tight end in fantasy football. He does has a good amount of versatility to his game. He called be in line as a blocker. He could be in the slot. He could probably play out wide, but I think he's probably one of the most versatile tight ends in the NFL, especially coming out as a rookie. Did damage at Georgia, and I think he'll provide that type of that versatility in the NFL. And he may come in second with, he may come in, I think he will finish top three in receptions with the Raiders. And I think Minshew pretty much likes his tight ends. So I'm going to go ahead and take a deep flyer with Brock Bowers. We'll select Brock Bowers in round 11, pick two. Round 12, pick 11, just took care of the tight end position. 
We're good on quarterbacks. Let's start to look at the running backs that are available. Um, Roshan Johnson, Elijah Mitchell, Damian Pierce, Bucky Irvin. This is where I'm starting to take a flyer here. And I'm not going to lie. I am going to select Bucky Irving and have him as a stash running back on my bench. He does have similar skill set to as Rashad White. Good running back. Provides value as a receiver. and Bucky Irving did pretty much good damage in Oregon. And if Rashad White were to go down, Bucky Irving is going to step right in and get a lot of the workload. And don't be surprised if you do see Bucky Irving's name come in early on the season and kind of get his share in some workload. So I do like Bucky Irving here. I just like his versatility as a running back. And he does have similar skill sets to Rashad White. So I'm going to go ahead and select Bucky Irving just to kind of reach a little bit and select him as my running back stash. Round 13, pick two. I think we should start to look at some kickers, defense. And right here, I'm going to select the New York Jets here. Um, I am a big fan of their past defense. And I think this defense isn't going to regress. Um, top five defense in the NFL. And you really can let a defense that's still available here go by. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select New York Jets. Very good pass defense. And I think if Aaron Rodgers is still healthy, this team as a whole could be dominant. But I defensively, New York Jets, I really like their defense. Very solid defense. I'm just go ahead and have them as our primary defense. Round 14, pick 11. We do not have a kicker. I think this time we can start to get our kicker in. And I really like Jason Sanders, Miami Dolphins offense. It's going to be very potent. They're going to move the ball as long as they have Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, Tua. Very high octane offense. They're going to move the ball and put themselves in the red zone, goal line situations. And even if they don't, they can sell for a field goal, field goal. And I like Jason Sanders here. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a kicker and select Jason Sanders from the Miami Dolphins. Okay, round 15, pick two. We are in the final round of fantasy football with having the second pick. And I'm going to go ahead and select the second tight end. I understand that we have Brock Bowers as the starting tight end, but I think it's very crucial to have a veteran tight end on the bench or someone that you could change in with Brock Bowers. Bowers is still a rookie. We don't know what kind of production he'll provide. He is Great, great versatility skill sets, but I think we should get a nice safety option in case things don't go well during the season. So I'm going to go ahead and select Hunter Henry, tight end out of the New England Patriots. He did finish top 15 in fantasy out of all tight ends last season. Um, the wide receiver core in the Patriots is a bit subpar, very young, and a bit you know uninspiring and i think hunter henry will be relied on as a safety valve and may get some good red zone target shares for joey present or maybe when drake may gets his opportunity so let's go ahead get yourself that second tight end veteran and we're going to select hunter henry all right there you have it this is who i would select if i had the second pick in fantasy football this is a recap of who i've drafted let me know in the comments sections below on if there's anything that you would change, what are your thoughts on this team, and any other comments that you may have if you were to have the second pick in fantasy football. Thank you so much for watching, and catch you next time.